Hello, thank you for joining us. Um, my name's Verity and I work at Blush Floral Art and we're pleased to have you join us for Friday Flowers. This video has three parts. The first part is teaching you how to condition your flowers, um, several easy steps to make your flowers last as long as they possibly can and look as beautiful as they can for as long as possible. This week we have a posy of seasonal flowers including muscari, roses, uh, tulips and broom and solidago which are all beautiful flowers that are going to create a wild look posy for your dining room table. We're going to show you how to use some simple mechanics to help you create loose and wild looking seasonal florals like this with different levels and different shaped blooms to create a relaxed informal look. Welcome to part one of your flower class. This stage will teach you all about how to condition your blooms so that they are in the best possible shape when they get to you to last the longest possible time in the vase and look as beautiful as they possibly can. If you've done this class before there and you know all about conditioning flowers then please feel free to skip forward to stage two. That's where we introduce you to the blooms that we're going to use this week. But before we start, we need to make sure our flowers are in really good condition. So it's time to move on to stage one. So the first stage in any good flower arrangement is conditioning and prep of your blooms. This ensures that they're in the best possible condition to arrange with. Wherever you get your flowers, they may have traveled to you quite a long way. You'll need for this stage, a pair of scissors or secateurs to cut your stems and cool jars or vases or buckets of water ready to give your flowers a nice cool drink. A lot of times the flowers that reach us have traveled a long way either uh, from suppliers or farmers and growers um, or we could be buying our flowers from a supermarket or another florist um, or picking them from the garden. They still need to be put into the best possible shape to last the longest in their vase. First of all, get your flowers from your bucket or wherever you're um, getting them from and lay them out on the table in front of you. This makes sure you can see how many blooms you've got, how much foliage you've got for your arrangement and seek a good balance. If you take each stem, cut it near to the length that you're going to um, want to use and then strip off the lower part of the stem from, of leaves to ensure that your vase water will stay the cleanest it can possibly stay. You need to do this with every stem and then snip the end, like I said, close to the length that you want to use. You might need to trim them to use them in your um, eventual arrangement, but this cuts down on the amount of tidying that you have to do at the end with snipped stems and loose leaves. And it also means that you're um, better able to see what you've got available to arrange with. You can do your conditioning prep in any order. Um, it's best to keep the same type of uh, bloom or foliage together. Um, I try 
to keep them in little piles. The only reason why you do this is so that you know, or it's quicker to arrange with to start with because you are reaching for the same type of bloom, the same type of foliage, um, and it just makes it a lot quicker and a lot easier to create your designs. You need to do the same as you've done with the foliage with any flowers. Now, in a similar system, you want to keep your filler flowers, which are your kind of less sort of blousy, fabulous, big blooms, and the ones that you kind of use in between your foliage to balance your arrangement. And you want to make sure uh, that you've got enough of that, enough foliage and a good balance to create your arrangement. And the conditioning stage is a really good stage to do this because you can really see what you've got Similar to your foliage, um, you'll often find filler flowers have lots of little stems on one long stem, um, which is why they're useful as fillers because they kind of bulk up your arrangement and allow you to create balance and fullness um, in your vase or container. Uh, if you trim your filler to a similar length as you did with your foliage, uh, pile it up ready to go into a vase or pot uh, then you can create a really useful system so that you've got your filler and your foliage and your blooms ready to go this just makes it as I said a lot quicker to create your origin like your um, designs rather than going back and cutting and prepping um, flowers in between it also ensures that your blooms have the best possible chance to take up water and stay as fresh um, as possible in the vase uh, or whatever framework you're using to arrange in. Once you've prepped all of your flowers, um, it's really useful to have similar sized um, vases ready to pop them straight into. Um, if you fill these vases with really cold water, um, a little bit of flower food. If you don't have flower food, sometimes it's useful to just put a tiny dot of bleach in the water, especially if this is the water that you're using to arrange in as well. Um, it helps your flower stems stay as clean as possible, reduces the amount of bacteria in the water and make sure um, that uh, your flowers are as healthy as they possibly can be which means that they last longer so you get to enjoy them for as much time as possible. It doesn't really matter what your the vases that you use for conditioning your flowers are, um, these are not going to be your final um, vases for arrangement so you can use jam jars, buckets, whatever you've got handy, um, just make sure it's clean, um, fill it up with water and then um, and if it's a similar size it sort of helps just because you can line up your flowers and have them there handy and ready to arrange with. Try not to get too fussy about the type of vase or receptacle that you're using to condition it because this is not your final um, final tool for arranging. It's just in order to have your flowers, your foliage, your filler laid out in front of you and ready to work with. Just makes life a little bit easier. Once you have your filler flowers and your foliage ready, remember for different types of arrangement you might have several different types of filler flowers um, and several different types of foliage. Um, the more textures you've got, often the better. Then it's time to prepare your main blooms. Now, whatever is your main kind of hero flower for your arrangement, you need to do the same as with the foliage and strip the stems of, of leaves that may sit in the water that you'll be arranging in. Um, these are liable to rot over the week. You have your flowers 
um, and build up bacteria and stop the flower from absorbing water as efficiently as possible can cause them to wilt and not bloom fully so you want your flowers to be able to open in your arrangement last and look the best that they can possibly look so it's really important to get this stage right so you're ready to arrange again make sure you've got water handy to place them into it doesn't need to you don't need to worry about what they look like in the water because you're just um, using this as a receptacle to store them while you're um, getting ready to arrange. But don't pack them in too tight to the container because otherwise it's very difficult to get one bloom out at a time and the flower heads can get damaged. Make sure you cut the stems a similar length. They don't need to be all the same length. Um, usually the best thing to do is cut them on a slant um, that enables the bloom to take up the most water, create the biggest surface area in the stem to ensure that your uh, flowers are having a nice long drink. You can just pinch off the leaves from the stems. Be careful if you're using roses. Obviously some roses uh, have thorns. Not all roses, um, some of the roses that use now are uh, specifically bred and engineered to have smooth stems um, and no thorns which is helpful to a florist but if you do have a flower with thorns on you can just snip them or scrape them off gently with a um, florist knife uh, or sometimes they snap off quite easily if they're sort of big thorns um, but just be very very careful uh, if you've got very sensitive hands you might choose to wear um, protective gloves at this point like just a pair of gardening gloves or uh, gloves that you would use with your dishes so your marigolds uh, are a really good option um, I prefer to get hands on which is probably why my hands end up horribly um, scarred and covered in thorns if you've got a flower with lots of petals, like a rose, uh, the outside petals are called the guard petals, and it may be necessary to remove some of them. I usually like to leave the guard petals on if they aren't too damaged, simply because they often have a little bit of a different colour to the rest of the rose. They can often have a tinge of green or brown sometimes, you know, not a kind of discoloured brown, but sort of bred into the rose brown or um, like a darker tone so they make a really nice addition to the texture of the flower uh, but that's really personal choice as well um, lots of people prefer the kind of cleaner looking rose um, so you would strip off the flowers then when you've conditioned all your flowers and they're ready tidy up your work area um, obviously this is optional but it just means that you've got a clear space to see what's going on with your arrangement um, and work with. It keeps things a lot tidier and keeps things together and keep, just keeps you having a clear head so you can see what you've got in terms of foliage and filler and blooms to create your final arrangement. Welcome to stage two of our flower class. Um, you will have already conditioned your blooms if you're at this stage. Um, and if you've done lots of our flower classes before and you're using our flowers, um, you will, in this section, meet the blooms that we're going to use. If you're using your own flowers, then you can skip this stage if you've selected your flowers yourself, skip this stage and move straight to stage three, which is the fun bit, the arranging part. Uh, but in the meantime, we will introduce you to the flowers that we've selected for you today. You'll find in your bucket a bunch of seasonal flowers, a mixed bag of filler flowers and your main blooms. There's a really nice selection today and um, there's a couple of flowers that have really beautiful scent so that will make sure that your arrangement has a lot of character and depth. Why use seasonal flowers? 
Well, some of the reasons why we use seasonal flowers uh, is because it uh, means that you get the best of the blooms. They're freshest, they're at their best, they're growing naturally um, in a more kind of uh, eco-conscious way. So some of these flowers are UK grown. Uh, we'll start to see Welsh grown flowers come into our flower selection for your classes. Um, and among these flowers are a mix of things that we find uh, growing around us. So we've got um, some spring flowers like tulips and the muscari uh, and a couple of tulips that we have in there as well, a couple of different varieties of tulips. And this will help to give your uh, arrangement a bit of authenticity and a sense of place. So it really reminds you of the seasonality of flowers, which I think is really, really good for the soil and just aesthetically um, chimes in with uh, where we are in our um, year and we're just coming into spring so therefore using spring flowers is a really way of good way of connecting with our environment first flower is, uh, that I'm going to introduce you to is broom and we've chosen a white broom uh, it's got a really beautiful scent. Uh, if you get up close to it, it smells kind of like honey um, so that will add a real nice depth to your arrangement, just really should beautifully scent the room um, and just be really enjoyable. It's a filler flower so it's a really good um, flower for adding like a framework to your arrangement. So we are going to be um, splitting off some of the little little stems from the main stem. It's a sort of spray structure to the bloom. And it's just a really beautiful addition to this wild look arrangement. The second flower that I'm going to introduce you to is muscari. This is sometimes known as grape hyacinth. They're really tiny, so the size contrast is really beautiful in this arrangement. These come in this lovely blue, which through the week will fade to a slightly paler blue, almost white. Um, they're lovely, they're a really good cut flower, very tiny. So if you've got any leftover from arranging, pop them in a little bottle or jar, they're beautiful and really add something spring-like to your arrangement. We've got very soft stems, so you only need to trim them. Um, they're quite juicy, so they definitely need to be uh, in a good, cool drink of water. In each of your buckets, you'll find a little sprig of really dark, purpley, almost black viburnum berries. And these are in there for your texture. Um, there's also uh, eucalyptus populus berries. Um, and they're adding a nice element of texture and they're kind of a limey green. So you've got the really dark um, purple of the viburnum and the really acidy green, which I think is a really spring-like feel of the viburnum berries. You've got yellow solidago, which is an excellent filler flower. Again, like the spray structure makes it really helpful for... Um, bulking out your arrangements and the colour is just really springy and lovely and adds to that wild look. Next you'll find in your buckets a huge frilly uh, rose. This isn't a spray rose like we've used in previous weeks, this is one single ste long stemmed rose. Um, we're going to be using a technique which we've learned in previous classes which is to flex the petals back slightly so this is a statement part of your arrangement. You'll also find germini, which are mini gerbera um, and these are intended to be used as long stemmed as you like to add a little bit of movement and flex to your arrangement. Uh, you can wire these uh, but we're going to leave them loose like the tulips to add a little bit of movement and wave 
um, using their natural structure to give you uh, a bit of energy in your arrangement. These are just some of the flowers that you're going to be using in your arrangements. There'll be a few of extra bits and different bits in your buckets that you're welcome to kind of play around with. Um, but now it's time for the fun bit to start arranging. You can move on to stage three. So welcome to stage three of Blush Highly Flowers class. Firstly, we're gonna be using simple mechanics that we've used before. If you choose a shape of your vase, that is going to be deep enough to um, put all of your flowers in. Make a small egg-shaped structure out of chicken wire. You should have some chicken wire that you've been able to recycle from the past classes or if not, just use some galvanized um, large gauge chicken wire. Uh, crunch it into a ball, make sure you're careful of sharp edges. Fill your vase up with water to the level where your stems are gonna reach through it. The chicken wire just creates a base, a framework to put your stems through uh, so they're not gonna shift. Um, take your filler flower and start to place sections of it in through the wire. This is going to help as well as the chicken wire to create a framework to put your stems through. When you're arranging with some of the spring flowers they've got their own movement of the stems so the muscari and the tulips that we've got uh, will kind of bend and wave through it. The tulips also um, will carry on lengthening and growing when they're in your arrangement so you need to remember that um, the length of those is gonna change and it's going to alter the balance of your display. I've chosen a round kind of pebble-like vase. It's asymmetrical uh, and this is quite a useful shape to go for if you're making an asymmetrical arrangement. Um, this is gonna be quite a wild spring uh, blossom type display. The broom, is creating a little kind of wild framework around the edge of your flowers um, and it will also help to support the blooms as you push them through. You've got a really nice selection of flowers um, and textures. I've got the viburnum berries here which are really dark and lovely. You can strip, you can strip more of the leaves off um, if you've already conditioned them, you will have stripped quite a few of the leaves that are going below the surface off. Um, this has got like a windy tendril piece on, they're all different shapes. So you just work with the shapes. Uh, it doesn't kind of matter too much in an asymmetrical, natural look arrangement like this. Um, what uh, kind of shape you go through, carefully push the stems through, try not to dislodge the chicken wire, but you can always kind of remould it and pull it back up afterwards. Tulips um, are really, really great for creating that kind of natural movement. If you want them to stand straight up, right, just leave them in the vase while you're conditioning them with damp newspaper or the brown paper that they came in wrapped around them and they'll hold their shape. Uh, if they're starting to droop, you can take a pin um, and uh, just prick the top of your stem just near the um, flower um, and immerse it in water and they should kind of perk up again. If you put the tulips through, kind of, I've chosen to put them through at a sort of angle um, and at intervals. They're a really nice focal point for your arrangement. And then we're gonna go back in around the tulips with filler. So here I've got the Solidago. It's really bright, nice yellow. I think it's called Crazy and Glory, this variety that you've got. I'm stripping some of the little um, flower branches off the main stem. And I'm using them almost to create a collar around the side of the vase. The vase is kind of um, a rounded shape and it's an irregular shape, so you don't have to be too picky about getting the balance here. We want to create kind of off-centre, really natural, gathered feel to the arrangement. When you've got enough of your solid ego in there uh, to create 
kind of framework and a structure, then you'll feel like when you're putting the blooms in, uh, they're just accenting against the background of your filler. Uh, you can carry on using the little stems and then as you get towards the end you can use the larger part uh, and that creates a really nice kind of solid display but also the, um, the solid ego with the little bits carries on your theme so it all looks quite unified. The broom again you can use the little pieces and then use the main um, the main branch uh, as a focal point again. The centre that's beautiful so you'll have a really nice nice display which is kind of really sensory and lovely. The second uh, focal flower that we're going to put in is your rose. Uh, you should have a couple of these large long stemmed roses in your bunch um, and I'm just flexing the petals out as you can see. We did this in the last class uh, so you can always go back to the tutorial um, to uh, have a little recap but you just softly fold down the petals um, to create more of an impactful rose. This is a really nice coloured rose. Um, it's got the kind of darker pink in the middle. You can also blow, give one short sharp puff into the very middle of the flower um, to really kind of push the petals out to the edges and you'll change the shape of the rose uh, so that it's got kind of more impact um, and more uh, volume to it. Trim your rose diagonally to the length that you require. Um, this is going to be uh, one of the focal points of your arrangement, so it's really important to get the positioning right. The chicken wire and the filler flowers will help to support that in your arrangement. You're going for a, uh, an asymmetrical look, so um, it's better to place it off centre. Uh, you can use some of that accent filler. This is the uh, eucalyptus berries. Uh, it's in really nice acid green. You can use some of the solidago as a contrast to the um, pale blush of the flower. Uh, but really, um, you just want to get the feel and the balance of the arrangement at this stage. This is why the chicken wire, or um, you could use a pin frog uh, uh, to help you structure. Um, place placing the rose off centre uh, means that you have to. Um, balance out the uh, arrangement using tulips. Here we're going to place a little gerbera, mini gerbera in there. Um, you can change the positioning as you need to, um, but you want to kind of create a loose feel. So um, balance the length of the stems with the size of your vase. So if you've chosen a smaller vase, you can you, you only want to kind of increase the size of your arrangement uh, proportionally. Um, you'll find in your bunches a little um, piece of textural grass or um, twigs just to help you balance the arrangement. Um, you can place in the grape hyacinth or the muscari. Um, they are littler, um, so you can you probably won't want to trim those too close. Um, I like to leave the stems long, they do kind of flop over, which I think is really nice, particularly in a wild look arrangement like this. Um, you can keep on going around your vase, sort of, you know, look at the different angles that you've got to make sure that none of the wire is exposed. Um, you can go back in with the broom to create a kind of flow around the arrangement. Um, here we've chosen like a white coloured broom, so it's like a, a little pop of um, light colour that ties in the lightness of the tulips and the lightness of the rose. Um, it's also scented, like I said before, so it's a really beautiful addition to any arrangement. Um, it does dry quite well, so you could use it, keep it and use it and recycle it um, if you are doing a mixture of dried and fresh. At this point we're going to place the other rose that's in your bunch. Um, we're cutting the roses quite short, so you'll notice that the larger the larger flowers are um, the roses which are placed quite close in the base of the vase, um, so coming out on either side. And then there's a lot of movement that's from the filler flowers um, and the twiggy bits and the grasses, uh, so it creates a kind of very 
a loose feel, very relaxed feel. Um, you can place the smaller blooms in between the roses. Um, you just want to create a kind of linking arrangement. Uh, I've got a little handful of moss that I've got from my garden. You'd, I'm sure you can find um, moss or we use the silver Spanish moss that we used in the last display just to tuck in and hide your mechanics, which in this case is your wire. If you've used a pin fog, you won't need to do that, but it's a good way to kind of support your blooms. And there you have it, really natural spring table centre uh, that's scented and um, really relaxed and just a bit of seasonal joy. Happy Friday. Thanks so much for watching and we hope to see you next time.